Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I want to give you a brief overview of understanding the nature of energy of satellites that are moving around a central body. And in this case, I'm going to use the Earth as an example. <music> Now remember, please like, share and subscribe and maybe consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. Now I do have a more fulsome video where I discuss the energy of satellites in orbits and I encourage you to check out the link up here or in the link in the description below. Today is just going to be a really quick small nugget of the concepts. Now let's start off with our Earth and we will put a satellite into orbit like so. Now, what types of energy does it possess? Well, the first type of energy it possesses is, of course, the gravitational potential energy, which is the value of negative g m over r. But the satellite is also in orbit and it's moving, and so it also has kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy in this case is simply the kinetic energy formula, which is equal to simply a half mv squared. But we can replace the v squared. Because the orbital velocity, which is determined by the understanding of centripetal force and the fact that it is also due to the gravitational force, you get a value for v squared as g m over r. And so now we can rewrite the kinetic energy formula as capital G m m over r to r. Automatically you see that there's a relationship between u and k. But what we're really interested in is the total energy. And so the total energy is simply the sum of those two, u plus k, and you can see what's going to be here is going to do negative g capital M lowercase m over 2r. So in other words, if my satellite is in an orbit, then the total energy remains constant. But if it moves into a greater orbit or into a smaller orbit, then the total energy changes. And in fact, because this is a negative number, if it goes into a larger orbit, it actually increases in the total energy. It becomes closer and closer to zero. So let's draw our next orbit. Now, our next orbit, generally speaking, can ne may ne necessarily be a circular orbit. And so we might actually get an orbit that becomes elliptical because of the nature of the motion that's going on. And so now we have a larger orbit and the total energy increases. So we have an energy that we started off with and now we have an energy that we have left over and that basically means you have an increase in energy. And so where does that energy come from? Clearly the satellite, in this case it could be a rocket of some sort, will need to do some sort of work to get it to that position. And so therefore energy one plus the work done gives us energy too. And so you now are able to work at how much work is done by simply comparing the two energies of the orbit after and the orbit before. And so, of course, that also means in reverse. And so this satellite actually may go a little bit slower. And then in that case, it might actually undergo into still an elliptical path. But in this case, it's a small orbit. And so the work is done by the gravitational field. And so obviously what we now get, W becomes a negative value. One last point though, what about the total energy of, let's say, the satellite in an elliptical path. Isn't the radius increasing at certain points? Yes, that's true. But the total energy, as long as it stays in orbit, remains constant. And so, for example, if we look at the large ellipse that I have over here, you can see this distance R2 is definitely greater than this one is R1. So what we can say is that the gravitational energy is definitely larger for this one over here and smaller for here. But the total energy remains the same. What happens? Well, the kinetic energy, as you can see, as we go to a larger orbit, then the kinetic energy actually decreases. And so we have an increase in potential energy, resulting in a decrease in kinetic energy, but the total energy remains the same. That is actually consistent with Kepler's second law, which is all about the different speeds of our satellite or different speeds of our satellite in an elliptical path. Well, I hope that has helped you understand very briefly the concept of energy of satellites. My name is Paul from Physics Sky. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and maybe buy me a coffee. Take care and bye for now.